Unika, hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi, Unika. Welcome to the show. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this is a cubic graph question. Yes. Right, and it's a calculus. Okay, so we required to sketch the following, and we've got y equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4. Okay, and obviously it, it uh, show all the relevant points. Yes. Okay, now, whenever you're sketching anything, you must show your important points. In other words, show your marker, where your x-intercepts, your y-intercepts, your stationary points, all those kind of things. Points of inflection if you have one. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, a cubic graph has a very straightforward method. You always use the same method when you're answering these questions. There's three things you need to find. You need to find the y-intercept. Yes, the y Okay. Then you need yes. to find the x-intercept. And then later on, you need to find the... Turning points. Turning point or stationary points. Yes. Okay, great. Y-intercept. Nice and easy. What is the y-intercept here? I'm going to write my x equal to zero. Okay. So, so I get, so that's now zero, and that's now zero, and I end up with? Four. Four. So it's just naught four, hey? Yes. Okay, so nice and easy. Next, how do I find my x-intercept? What do I do? Okay, I, oh, um, first let my y equals to zero. Okay, so I end up with zero equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4 yes. and then you do trial and error right yes. so you try if you've got a table calculator you can plug it in there but you try yes. f of 1 f of minus 1 are you with one. me yeah the answer is f of minus 1 okay so f of 1 doesn't equal naught f of yes. minus 1 does equal naught so it's, it yes. works yes great so that means that x plus 1 it's, it's is a factor. great x plus 1 is a factor what do I do next? To say x plus 1. Okay. And then brackets x squared. Okay, hang on a second. Let's just erase that down there. Give us a little bit more room here. So I'll say x plus 1. Yes, brackets. Brackets x squared. Minus vx. Minus vx. Yes. Okay, so this is the method you've been shown. So let's call it vx, right? Yes, plus 4. Plus 4. Then I'm going to multiply x by 4. I'm going to multiply x by 4, okay. This is 4x. 4x. And Hang then on, 1 just, by... I'm just going to put this in color because this is part of your method. So, because there might be others out there who haven't seen this before. So I'm going to say 4x, yeah, keep going. And then 1 multiplied by negative vx. Okay, minus 1vx. And what must yes. this equal? Minus 4x minus vx. Must equal? To zero. To zero. Can you tell us why? Because uh, then our y intercept is equal to zero. No, it's because there's no x terms here. That's why yes. you're setting it to zero. Okay. Are you with me? Look, are there any x terms here? No. There's an x cubed, there's an x squared. Are there any x's? No. no, so that's why you set it to zero. It's actually zero x. Because remember, that times that must give you this over here. Because you're okay. factorizing. It's the same as if I take the number 10, right? Number 10. Yes. And I say, let's break it up. So it's 5 times 2. Are you with me? Yes. When I multiply 5 times 2, it must give me 10. Do you agree? Yes. If it doesn't, then it doesn't work. Yes. So when I multiply these two, Look at my fingers. When I multiply this out, I need to get back to that. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Do you okay. agree? Yes. So at some point, if I just look at my x terms, I'm going to say x times 4, x times 4. That's going to give me my 1x term, 4x. And then the other one is going to come from this 1 times vx. So it becomes minus 1vx. And together, 
They must give me whatever X's I have there. Now, sometimes you might have a 2X there or a 1X, then you'll write it. But in this case, I have no X's. So I have no X's. So what must V be then? Okay, V equals to minus 4. No, V equals to 4. Not minus 4. 4 minus 4 is naught. Okay, but I'm using a different formula because it's going to be, you're going to divide by x now. And then I'm going to be with 4 minus b equals to 0. Then b goes to the other side and then the 4 goes to the right side, which is going to be b equals to minus 4. No, it's not. Exactly what you said now, but you're wrong. Exactly okay. what you said is right up until the end. Have a look. If I divide by x, I'm going to get 4 minus v equals 0. When I bring my v across, I get 4 equals v. Okay. Not, not minus V. Are you with me? Yes. Do you see where you're going wrong? Yeah. Okay, so don't do things in your head. In your exam, write it down. Just make sure. Okay. Because your method's good. I like what you're doing. Just make sure you don't make silly mistakes like that, hey? Okay. Okay, but I like what I'm seeing. I think you know your work here. Right, so now, mm. I, know what, now I know what V is. So all I've got to do is put it back in. So therefore, mm. what I end up with when I factorize this thing is I end up with X plus 1. Now, I know what V is, so it's just X squared minus 4. X plus X. 4. Like that. Mm -hmm. Equals 0. Now, can I factorize this more? Yes. How can it I factorize that? That's a squared there. How can I factorize it more? It's going to be... There at the top, there's supposed to be X squared here. Okay. It's going to... Two brackets and then X minus 2 and X minus 2. Well done. X minus 2 and X minus 2. So, my X intercepts... I can see them now exactly. Yeah, minus and 1 or x equals to 2. 2 and then 2 again, actually. But it obviously, it's in the same place, right? Yes. Okay. Next, I need to do stationary points. Okay. How do I find stationary points? We're going to use the derivative. Equal to? F. The derivative F equal to? Equal 3x squared minus 6x. 3x squared minus 6x equals? Zero. zero. Okay, mm. what can I do with that? I can mm, simplify it me like oh. x and then 3x minus 6. Okay, but I can pull a 3x out here. So I'm just going to get x minus 2. Do you see that? Yes. Equals naught. Okay. Which means x equals 0 or x equals 2. Mm. Are you mm. with me? Yes. Now, that will always happen when you get two x-intercepts. It means it's also a turning point. So it's just a check that you can do along the way. Okay. Yes. All right. So now I need to find the y values, hey? Yes. So when x is naught, that means it's my y-intercept, right? Yes. So when x is naught, it means that my yes. y-intercept is 4. So y is 4. Yes. Do you agree? Yes. So my one stationary point is 0, 4. Mm. What about when x is 2? When x is 2, my... Y is 0. Y is 0. So 2 comma naught. And now all I'm left to do is to put it all together. So mm -hmm. I draw my diagram like this. Right? Yes. Your station, your x-intercepts are minus 1 and 2. Sorry, minus 1 and 2. Are you with me? Yes. And 2. My y-intercept over here is at 4. Do you follow? Yes, I do. And then my, my turning point is here and here. There's only one way this graph can go. And that's down like this, through here, and then back down like that. Do you see that? Yes. And that's your y and your x. Okay. Are you happy with that? Yes. Okay, so I think that was a pretty straightforward cubic graph question. Do you want me to go through it again, or are you happy? No, I'm happy. I just want to ask, they didn't say the fish not a point, but they did say it. Turning point. Same thing. Okay. Okay, okay. same thing for a cubic graph. Because it's, okay. the, it's the minimum and maximum values. It's the minima and maxima rather. Okay. 